uh, Mateus, this one one for you. So smart buildings and green buildings are the same thing. So agree or not agree or? <laughs> um, I certainly disagree to that myth. Um, we're actually very happy to say that um, uh, some of the greenest buildings I know of actually run already on Janssen sensors and they are using that uh, sensor technology to uh, uh, really make uh, an impact for the environment. Um, we have um, a few great partnerships with companies that specialize in energy um, solutions. Uh, for instance, one uh, with uh, Ecopilot and others. And they actually have software that um, where they have shown in real buildings uh, all across the world, actually, that if you connect uh, your BMS um, uh, to your Janssen installation or to any um, se large scale sensor install, you can actually optimize your building so that you deliver the same kind of um, environment and comfort for tenants that you would always do while saving up to 40% of your energy uh, usage from that building. And, and considering that in the EU, I think about 40% of uh, the energy uh, generated is actually used by buildings. That is, of course, a massive untapped market. And um, it's an easy way to, to quickly recuperate the, the full sort of investment into uh, the technology by just deploying one of these systems. And uh, we're really seeing that th this market is heating up. There is uh, a lot of competition, a lot of uh, uh, really good and cool solutions on the market, and uh, uh, a lot of investments as well. So I, I fully expect that within five years, this will become the norm in, in both new buildings, but also in retrofit uh, cases. Uh, so that, this is very exciting and certainly something that we follow closely. Yeah, I, th I think your point on tech involvement and investment coming into this sector, I, I, I agree with. And, and, you know, smart buildings and green buildings, smart buildings generally do help you build a green building or retrofit to make a building greener. I think one of the biggest things, and, and I'm going to throw three letters out there that we talked about the other week, but ESG, right, that, you know, environmental social governance is is huge and it's growing someone told me a stat the other day and i don't i, I need to try and confirm this because it's a big stat is pwc are looking to hire and again i don't know if this is confirmed or not so it may someone may have made it up to throw it at me but pwc pwc are looking to hire ten thousand esg consultants over the next five years so that's a big number you know big space so green buildings you know net zero we just joined tech zero uh yesterday or the day before so green green buildings are massively important you know the energy usage is you know that it is 40 percent of commercial buildings are the you know the contrib contributor to to energy usage globally i mean that's massive so so yeah the smart buildings and green buildings are the same thing i i depends on what you're doing with them right so you can make a building smart but you may not necessarily make it green if you just want to turn stuff on and off if you want to actually try and reduce your carbon emissions and you connect to the energy meters you can put sensors on buzz bar you can put sensors in the hvac systems you can put sensors in meeting rooms and you can see what's going on then you can adjust the bms or generally you can actually find that the bms is not configured in the right way and so it does lead to it, but if you know, if if you're just putting some some sensors in just to make it smart and make it look cool, that's not necessarily going to make it green. But you know, it's uh, it is. Well, and, and are you making green uh, the building green uh, at oh. you know, uh, occupants and things, right? Uh, so uh, I, I think we lost you know, for a second there, Dean. Unless it was just me. Oh yeah. Uh, I think you know at the expense of uh, uh, occupant uh, uh, health and wellness or, or comfort. Yeah. Um, you know, are you, are you making it green? And, and really, like the uh, using the technologies, like you can find the right balance. And... Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree, I agree. And then one one of the things that we are seeing more and more people asking us for. Uh, uh, the green credentials, ESG is, is getting bigger and bigger. And I, and I think post COVID, 
everyone knows what indoor air quality is prior to COVID. No one, no one knew what indoor air quality was. So, you know, sensor deployments are just going up and up and up. So I think, I think, you know, we're, we're doing a, a project in Zurich with, with the landlord there. And, and one of their core objectives is, is indoor air quality, right? So, you know, and that is for two reasons. One is to prove to people the building, the, the, the air in the building is as healthy as it is outside. Cause in Zurich, it's generally better than somewhere like the UK or India or, or China and things like that. Uh, and the other is that they want to, they want to have a, a reference point from another, an independent sensor to their BMS sensor. So, you know, when you've got accurate sensors like all of you guys do, you know, it's easy to stick another sensor in, stick it on the wall where the battery can last pretty much forever the time you've got the building and have that as a reference point against the BMS. And generally what we have found previously is the BMS sensors may not have been calibrated in every planned preventative maintenance schedule that they that they should. So when you've got, you know, sensors like we've got from DT within 0.02 of a degree accuracy, it's pretty compelling to say, Mr. Customer or Mrs. Customer, your BMS is out by a couple of degree and here's the proof point of that. So there, there's 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 lots of benefits from deploying, number one, additional sensors and easy to install sensors, even if you want to just deploy them for a short period of time to to do a proof point with, within a building, right? So it, it that that may not be a permanent smart building, but it's helping you make the building greener by giving you a reference point on, on a temperature setting that you think is 21 degrees, but actually could be 23 or 24 degrees. And I think that's a very good point also that making the technology uh, cheap and available so you can actually have more reference points in the building yeah. that is installed for a longer period of time so you can prove change over time because in reality what you want to do is to track performance right yes uh, yeah. and and by having more sensors in there collecting that data over more time you will also have more accurate uh, measurements proving that you, you are going in the right direction and i think what at least my experience is in any office is that the BMS system has some sensors there, but uh, if you talk to people, they always have different perception, what is cold, what is warm, what yeah. is bad air, what is heavy air, but having sense, at least you can have a discussion around practical data rather than uh, what you feel as a person. I think that's important both when it comes to temperature, humidity and air quality. Yeah, 